Julio, I would love if there were real meaning or purpose in reality in human life, but I don't want to fool myself. Your theory of integrated information theory to explain consciousness is a radically new way of understanding consciousness as something other than the output of the physical brain. If that were true, what would that say about some of the deep meaning and purpose questions that one would have? Everything from could there be life after death uh, to is there a purpose in life? I won't be able to say too much on this, but there is something I want to say. If you take the physical world as we all think it exists outside ourselves, outside our own consciousness, well, it's there. In some sense, it's dark and cold and lonely. Some people may glorify how big it is or how infinitely small it is. These are all beautiful things. But one important thing to realize is that there is nothing it is like to be that. There is nothing it is like to be the universe. There is nothing it is like to be a galaxy. There is nothing it is like to be a star, a planet, a mountain, a rock. Probably there's not much it is like to be an atom or a quark either. But there is clearly something it is like to be you. And presumably an animal and certainly another human being. So now, if you take this perspective, which is really why integrated information theory says consciousness is information from the inside, it's intrinsic information, and it is a shape. Mm. Okay? Mm. Now, just think of this. We are here in this tropical garden. Okay? We have all learned by now to admire and uh, hold precious the uniqueness and the variety of the forms around us, be them plants, animals, people. We value the fact that they are all different and that particular way in which they are. But these are, to a large extent, external shapes, the one that we describe in the world. There is something to, about that. We value them. But those may not even exist intrinsically. So a mountain is beautiful and majestic and sublime. But the theory says there is nothing is like to be the mountain as such. It exists for us. Now, what we are talking about here are shapes that exist in and of themselves. They don't require an observer to exist. They are intrinsic integrated information. And so those are the shapes that we must cherish the most because a universe where there were shapes that exist only for an observer and not in and of themselves would be empty and meaningless. Mm. So I think if there is one moral here, a very simple one is we have to cherish these shapes, the shapes that exist from inside, the shape of integrated information. We want it to flourish and we want to add to it. We want to create shapes that are more and more uh, enlarged that have more and more aspects to it. After all, I said a shape is a maximally reducible conceptual structure. That's meaning itself. It's made of concepts and they have to live together within the same shape. So what we want is a great shape with many concepts. That's where consciousness resides. That's where meaning resides. That's where purpose resides. Okay. If I have this equalia shape, uh, is it in principle, possible in any form whatsoever, that that could survive the physical death of my brain? Uh, not the way I think of it. I think you need a physical world out there. It's a postulate. I may be wrong. But we have all reasons to believe there is something out there. It must satisfy certain properties. If that dissolves, consciousness will dissolve it is, because in the end it is an identity that I'm talking about. We obviously know that it exists, these, these, this quality space or this consciousness identity. Is that a pure accident in the universe that it just happened, that this universe happened to have these things? And if you rolled the tape back and ran it again, uh, maybe it wouldn't have occurred? Uh, or, or is consciousness something special in the universe? I cannot answer that. That is something special. There is no doubt about it, because it's the only thing it is like to be. <laughs> and it's the only thing that exists intrinsically. I like to say it's the only thing that's really real, as opposed to merely real. Mm -hmm. It is something it is like to be you. But what I can tell you in a very simple-minded way is that if we try to simulate some organisms, they're called animals, that evolve in an environment, and if the environment is rich enough, what you'll tend to see, at least that's what seems from these initial uh, explorations that we're doing together with various colleagues, well, it seems that structures evolve that happen to have a higher value of integrated information. So it looks like just being in a rich world which has its own causal structure will be a selective force for generating structure that actually exists from within. And so there is hope that's how we came about and that may be how we can actually progress.